All right, so today we're going to be fetching some data in Next.js, and I'm going to show you the difference between client-side fetching and server-side fetching, and when to use which function for server-side fetching. So um, this is a default project. I just created an Next.js project and removed the boilerplate that comes with it. And we have a hello world here. So we want to fetch data, and we want to see uh, what's the difference between client-side and server-side fetching. So let's first get the data conventionally, like you would always get it with React. So we're going to import Axios, and this is going to be the client-side fetching that you're used to. So we need Axios, and we need the use state hook, and the use effect hook, right? So we're going to be fetching the to-dos from the JSON placeholder, the, this, this API that everyone uses. So we're going to fetch some stuff from it. And at the beginning, we need to initialize a state. So we're going to say to-dos and set to-dos. And it's, of course, empty at the beginning. And we want to have a loader. So we're going to say loading. Is loading, actually. And set is loading. And we're going to set it to true at the beginning. Because at the beginning, it will always be loading. Now, we want to get the data. Get the to-dos. So we're going to create a use effect. And we're going to have an async function here. And you can your way into an async function like this and this is an async function and we will get the to-dos right so we're gonna say const do's is equal to we're gonna await axios and we're gonna get data from this url okay now we're gonna say const to do's data is equal to do's dot data so we're gonna get extract the data from this request and we're gonna say set to do's is going to be equal to to-do's data, okay? And if a request fails, we want to wrap it in try-catch, right? So we're going to say try-catch, and I'm not going to handle the if something breaks, because that's not the scope of this video. And we're going to add finally. So we can do this at the beginning. And finally, and this will execute always at the end, we're going to say set is loading to false. Okay, now... Here we're going to check is loading. If it is loading, we'll return loading to indicate that we're fetching the data. But if it's not, we're just going to go through all of the to-dos and we're going to return the to-do info, right? So we're going to say, let's say div, and in this div we will return just an to-do h4. For example, h4 to-do.title. Okay? Now, as you can see, let's see, missing key prop. Oh yeah, we have to get, give the key prop to do that ID. Okay, so as you can see, when we reload the page, it says loading for a brief, brief moment, and then it dis displays all the titles of the to-dos that we fetched. Okay, and this is what's called client-side fetching, because the process of getting these to-dos happens at our side. It happens when we receive the page, the entire page, so when we receive everything here through the request, and then our computer does this part. So our computer makes the request for this, gets the data, sets the to-dos, and then displays the info, right? And sometimes we don't want our computer to be doing this. For example, we want to get a random number at the server side to generate it. So the user does not generate it with the user's own JavaScript. We want to get some meta info, right? We want to, uh, we, we just want to gener generate some uh, posts from, for example, you go to Instagram and you go to slash user slash username here. We want to generate the posts on the server side and then send them. There's many different ways we want to have uh, server side fetching. So we will not do it like this. So now when we, when we want to do something with Next.js, for example, we want to fetch stuff server side and not like this, we have to use a special function and we're gonna uh, implement that in this example. So let's create an API endpoint and let's say it's meta inf and we can just copy the info from hello world from hello api and let's generate a random number here so we're going to say random number is equal to math dot random and we're going to multiply it by 100 and we're going to 
uh, right for this, so we don't have decimal points. Okay, and let's just return created at, and it's gonna be today date, date date, so new date, and let's return the number. So we're gonna say number, and it's equal to random number. Okay, so we're gonna be returning when we make a request to let's say API slash meta inf. It should be lowercase, I think. See, it returns created at the date and the number. Now, we want to get this server side. So let's, for example, create a page. It's called to do. And let's have a random to do that we can get by the ID. So we're going to export a default function. It's going to be called to do, for example. And we're going to return, for example, just to do ID. Okay. Just, those, just so that we know it works. So we're going to import React. Okay, and let's go to do slash 1. Okay, uh, why am I forgetting to add return? Okay, so we add to do slash 1. So this, we want to get stuff for this to do here on the server side. And instead of using the the use effect hook and then the state and everything else, we can use this function, which is called get server side props. And this function basically runs at the beginning of the request. So each time we go to slash to do slash one, this function will run. And this function executes, it gets the data and then returns it as props. So there is absolute no fetching on our side. We will just lie to our component that it has data props. And this data will be returned here. So let me let me show you through an example. So let's say we want to get a get a specific to do with an ID. Okay? So we're gonna basically just add get the to do. Okay, and we're going to say we need a pa parameter here that's going to be uh, based on the URL, right? So, axe is not defined, of course. Import axios. So, we're, we're going to first get the, the ID of the, of the to-do, right? So, we're going to add these, these backticks. I think they're called backticks. And we're going to get the to-do ID, right? So, we're going to say, so let's just try the query and let's log it. Let's see what's inside the query. And we can open the console, and when we reload, nothing happens here. Because this part executes on the server. So, let me just show an example. We're going to console log here. We're going to say to do. We reload, there's a to do, right? Because this part is client side. So, you can think of this as the user, and this is my server. So, we want to see what happens. We can, we can open our terminal, and we can see that the query as the ID of 4, and this is it, ID. So we can get the ID, I'm going to say const ID equal to query, and this is called object destructuring, this line here, and we want to get it from here. So we're going to say to do's ID, okay? Now we're going to get the to do, and we're going to say const data is equal to to do's dot data, and this is a single to do, so we don't need to do's. And we're just going to return the data object. Okay? And now, with this data, this is essentially it. This data that we pass here is this. But it's on the server side fetched, and we can instantly have it here. We don't need any loading, uh, checking for loading or similar. We can just place it here. As if it were a prop, a basic prop. We can say h4, and we can say to do that title to do data dot title and here you go that, that's the title for to do one you can go for to do to do four we can go for to do one you can go for to do i don't know 20 okay and it's gonna fetch the data and it's gonna be fetched on the server side so each time you make request it's gonna be fetched now uh for example uh, we can use it for more useful stuff for example you want to check something from the request you want to check um the location, the, 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 anything you want, right? You can check first, do it on the server side, 
and then return the data that you need. So, for example, we can use this meta inf to generate a random number. Let's say we want to do something with the user. We want to generate a random number for the user instead of doing it on the client side. Uh, we can just make a request like we do here. So we're going to say const random, let's say meta inf is equal to, and we're going to copy this. And of course, this is HTTP localhost 3000. And we're going to say API slash meta inf. And now we can say const meta inf data is equal to meta inf dot data. And let's just log the meta inf data okay let's log it and let's see what happens let's place this here i hope i got the url right yes i got the url right okay so we have the data here 74 10 it's always it's always a random number now we want to concatenate this so we're going to say we're going to use the spread operator we're going to say data and we're going to say to do data we're going to spread the to do data and we're going to spread the meta int data okay we reload the page and we can access the data so let's say for example to do id to do random number assigned is and we can say data dot number and each time this number is getting fetched again so it's there's no loading it's getting served from the server side right it's getting fetched on the server side and and the server is sending you all the data you you don't need to 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 catch it here to fetch it here not catch it. now let me show you the difference if we don't have the to do that's getting catched it's getting fetched here so we can remove this to do right to do data and the to do and we can remove it here and we can say data Let's just leave it like this actually. Meta in data. And we have the data here, right? And the data title, you see, to do it does not exist. So we need to fetch it on our side again. So let's just write out the code quickly. Use effect and use state. And again, let me just copy it from here. So we need the to do. The single to do, not to do's. Is loading, is set is loading, right? And we need the use effect hook. So we can fetch it. And we're going to say to do. And now we need to get the, the URL from our side. So we need to import use router. From next. So I'm going to import the router. I'm going to say const router is equal to use router. And I'm going to have to get the, the, the ID, right? So I'm going to destructure the ID from router.query. Okay? And we can send the parameter here. So this ID is going to be this here. So I'm going to get the ID here. So the ID. And to do data. To, to do. And we're going to say to do data. Okay. Update. So when the ID changes. Yeah, that's nice. And let's, let's display. If it is loading, we're going to say H1 loading. Loading to do. If it's not loading, then we're going to display the to do, right? So we're going to say div, say h4, and I'm going to say to do dot title. Okay. So when we reload the page, uh, why is title not displaying? Let me see. Set to do. Okay. You see, the, the, the to do is being fetched on the client side. And the number, the random number, and the created at this thing, if we return the created at the new date and the random, no, random number, is getting fetched on the server side. So if I go to my network, and let's, uh, I, I want to slow down my network, so it's, for example, past 3G, we reload, the page, we're fetching the data, it's loading, right? And it's, we're just getting this part here, the part from get server side props, and then when we get, uh, when we, when the page is served, then we send the request for the to do, right? So as you can see, the server side fetching is very efficient, but you need to know when to use it. So if the data changes constantly, so for example, if uh, the data changes on each request, 
like you want to fetch the username right and then you want to say some user on instagram you want to fetch that data each time because that user might have posted a a new post on instagram right but if you want to fetch stuff that you know will be the same most of the time you want to use the get static props and the get static props is just the same as get server side props but it's using caching right so you want to for example uh, you have a page on your site that you update yearly so there's rewards page for example uh there's a rewards page each year you get a new reward right you want to show off your trophies or something uh, you, you're gonna use the get static props to fetch your trophy, to fetch stuff, right? That does not change often, right? So, uh, you, since your trophies change each year, you only want to use this function to fetch the trophies. Because if you use this function, you will send an, an unnecessary request because you know they'll be the same. But you're gonna use get server side props when you know that stuff will change. And these are essentially the same functions. So you basically use this when the data does not change and you use this when the data changes, right? And this will ensure that you know what you're doing and this will ensure that your um, app is way faster is way more efficient and is way better at doing stuff uh, you need you should read upon server side render, rendering incremental rendering and stuff like that but this is not in the scope of the, of the video and you will un understand this better so that's it that's how you should you can data fetch in next.js and what's the difference between client side and server side fetching